Hi, in this section, we will review how to use attack trees to find threats. Attack trees are a representation of a goal that an attacker wants to achieve. So using attack trees can be called as goal-centric threat modeling approach or an attacker-centric threat modeling approach. And when threat modeling with attack-centric approaches, once the assets are identified, we could use mnemonics like stride or attack trees to enumerate how an attacker would achieve their goal. Just as with threat lists and how threat lists help us with finding threats, we can use existing attack trees to find threats in our applications. Attack trees are a representation of an attacker's plan to achieve a goal. There are many resources available for attack trees. As a matter of fact, 15 threat trees defined in Chapter 22 of the Microsoft Press book we discussed in the earlier modules can very well be used as attack trees. Creating your own attack trees can be a laborious and thought-intensive process, usually done by seasoned security professionals in brainstorming sessions. No matter which route you want to take, reviewing existing resources for attack trees are a great way to either find threats in your applications or to come up with your own attack trees. Once we've identified a suitable attack tree to use for identifying threats, and we have an architecture diagram of some sorts connecting the assets that we want to protect, we could start using the attack trees. Using attack trees is straightforward. We iterate over each leaf node on the attack tree and then identify whether that attack or threat action applies to the asset that we're trying to protect. Here's an example of a first documented version of an attack tree from Bruce Schneier's blog. The root node or the top of the hierarchy is the goal. The goal here is to open the safe and perhaps steal what's inside it. The leaf nodes indicate the list of possible ways that an attacker can use to open the safe. The attacker can simply use lock picking or cut open the safe or install the safe improperly so it can be opened at a later point in time. The attacker can also learn the combination key that opens the safe. Maybe the attacker finds the combination written in a place, or the attacker gets the combination from the safe owner itself. To get the combination from the safe owner, the attacker can threaten, blackmail, bribe, or eavesdrop to let the owner divulge the combination. That's just a basic version of an attack tree. Notice that there's also an AND symbol, or the word AND, at the lower level leaf nodes. AND symbol here in eavesdropping means that the attacker needs to listen to a conversation implied by eavesdropping, but that's not enough. The attacker also needs to wait or continue eavesdropping until the owner uses the combination in the conversation that's actually being eavesdropped. Attack trees can be AND trees or OR trees. Attack trees can be expanded to include possibilities of an attack, cost of an attack, what kind of equipments are needed to carry out an attack, and so on. There are many threat trees or attack trees available to take inspirations from. The most elaborate and notable threat trees is from the University of South Alabama, published as a part of the Elections Operation Assessment Project in the year 2009. The original intention of the project was to improve the procurement and operations of election operations. The draft available at the download link on the slide has about 300 plus pages of attack trees and explanations that can be very useful to analyze operational threats. The stride threat trees that we explored in the previous section has threats organized with respect to the stride mnemonic. Stride threat trees are great for analyzing threats on software, IT systems, and assets. The original version of the stride threat trees is from the book titled The Security Development Lifecycle published in the year 2006. 
The ebook is downloadable from the Microsoft website. The slightly improved and a little up to date version of the Stripe threat trees is available in the book, Threat Modeling Designing for Security, written by Adam Shostak, published in the year 2014. The other example of threat trees is the work done by Ivan Ristik in the year 2010. The attack trees here are represented as mind maps. It can also be pictured as trees. Besides the fact that attack trees help in finding threats, there are also tools available to create and maintain attack trees. Many of these tools support representing attack trees as code or configurations or files so that attack trees can be stored, audited, and versioned. The open source options may not come with attack trees that can be readily used for threat modeling or threat identification. However, the commercial options may provide out-of-the-box trees for threat identification. Here's a screenshot from the attack tree software from ISOGRAPH software. As a commercial software, it supports out-of-the-box attack trees that can be readily used for threat identification. It supports attributes such as probability of an attack, cost of an attack, equipments needed for an attack. It also supports analyzing the probability of an attack path with the data provided. Then there are also mitigation trees available in the attack tree software. I hope you've enjoyed this lecture. We will move on to the next lecture.